Well, hello everyone. Today I'd kind of like to segue from our last video where we talked about the ascent of Adomim. And one place that we mentioned at the start of that road is Jericho. And we mentioned that residential Jericho is the location where ancient Tel Jericho is located. And if you're asking yourself, why should I care about a hump of ruins that's thousands of years old? Well, the answer is this. Jericho is a demonstration that we can trust our Bibles. And if we can't trust the history in the accounts of the Bible, then how can we trust anything in the Bible that we apply to our lives? How can we trust in salvation, our future hope? If all of the Bible can't be trusted, then none of the Bible can be trusted. And that's one thing that Jericho demonstrates, is that we can trust the entirety of it. And I would just like to start by saying three things that were found at Jericho that demonstrate this. And the first is that walls were found at Jericho. And that's the most common thing associated is the walls falling down. In the account of Joshua when he came in and when the Israelites had their conquest into the land. But did these walls actually fall? And archaeologists have actually found two walls, which is very interesting. They found a stone wall at the bottom that holds in an earthen embankment. And the reason why this is important is because cities would elevate themselves to try to protect themselves from battering rams. So they would build it up with dirt and then keep this dirt uh, inside the embankment using stone walls. And then, for even more fortification, they would put mud brick wall on top. So there are actually two walls. There is a stone wall at the bottom, and then mud brick wall on the top to give it even more fortification. And what archaeologists found were the mud bricks fallen over underneath the stone wall. Now why is this important? And it is because if you look at Joshua 6.20, 620, it says, When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Now the Hebrew word there for collapsed literally means to fall underneath of itself. And that's exactly what archaeologists found with the two walls. They found the mud brick wall on top, remains still up there on the top. Then they also found fallen mud brick on the bottom of the stone wall, demonstrating that one wall fell underneath the other. It's exactly what the biblical account says. And this is just one instance where archaeology matches with the biblical account. And archaeologists have also found other things at Jericho. They found burn layers. And if you look at Joshua 6.24, it says, Then they, the Israelites, burned the whole city and everything in it, but they put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. So here again, we have evidence that the biblical account is right. We have burned layers in the digging that they've done and the excavations that prove uh, not only was it destroyed, but it was destroyed exactly how the Bible says it was. And then there's a third thing that archaeologists have found. They found storage jars full of burnt barley. And what does this demonstrate? Well, this demonstrates that Jericho was destroyed in the springtime. And guess what? That's exactly what the Bible says happened. If you look earlier on, it says, On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated Passover. And this was right after the Israelites crossed the Jordan and before they went to Jericho. And Passover's in the spring. And what those full storage jars demonstrate is that the conquest of Jericho took place at the exact time the Bible says it did. And it also demonstrates another fact that God told the Israelites not to plunder the city. Uh, he told them to burn it and not to take anything for themselves, but to put the treasuries in, in the Lord's house, but not to take any food for themselves. And what the storage jars demonstrate is that they didn't take the food. They left it behind and they burnt it with everything else. Why would they do that unless they had a reason? And we know that reason because the biblical account says that God told them to do just that. And probably more controversial than whether or not Jericho was destroyed is when it was destroyed. Because nobody really attests the fact, or nobody really argues the fact that Jericho was destroyed. But what they do argue is when it took place. A lot of liberal scholars will try to say that it was at 1550 BC. Now the problem with this is if that were the case, and if Jericho were destroyed in 1550, then there would be no Jericho at the time 
that the Bible says Joshua came to conquer it. So it's very problematic. It's very clear in 1 Kings 6.1, it says, In the 480th year, after the Israelites came out of Egypt, in the month of Ziv, the second month, he began to build the temple of the Lord. Now this is very important because in the fourth year of Solomon's reign, it was 480 years after the Israelites had come out of Egypt. And that's about the year 966. So if you add 966 to 480, you get 1446. So 1446 BC would be the time when the Israelites left Egypt. And then if you take 40 years off for the wilderness wanderings, you get 1406. So the Bible says that Joshua came into the land uh, roughly about 1406 BC. So it's very important that this is when the biblical account takes place. And it's very important that archaeology matches up with this. So how do we know? How do we know that the Bible is accurate and that Joshua actually came into the land at 1406. Well, archaeologists have also found pottery from the late Bronze period, which dates to around 1400. And pottery is really how archaeologists determine the dating of certain sites. Just like cars frequently change styles in the modern day, pottery also changed styles frequently. So archaeologists can look and see what pottery they found in the dirt and in their diggings and they can say this site was destroyed about this time because of the pottery that they found and because pottery when it's made is already burnt down it can remain throughout destruction and that's exactly what we see at Jericho we see a burnt city with pottery from the late bronze period 1400 and it matches with the biblical account perfectly so what does this demonstrate this demonstrates that we can trust our Bibles and that we can apply the truths of the scriptures to our lives. And if we can trust the history, then we can trust the practical application and we can live our Christian lives to the glory of God. So if you ever get an opportunity to go to Tel Jericho, it's a lot of technical information and it's a lot of history. But what this history demonstrates is that we can trust the things that we're doing in our lives that are practical for the glory of God.